What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here and it's time to start preparing for a new personal build. I know a lot of you guys are wondering where the hell is Post Malone stuff that's not coming until after his album drops. We're talking early next year and all that stuff. So I have time to prepare for it. But with that said, it's time to do a build for me because you guys know Skunk Works is a bit, well, I, I didn't want to take it apart and I don't want to update it. I'm gonna keep that together, bring it here to the studio and build a new system for home, which means we had to have a new chassis. And I think I got it. Ugh. It's heavy. I hope it's already all put together. Corsair's new light loop RGB fans feature 16 independent RGB LEDs across two separate light loops, allowing users to create unique and custom lighting effects. Perfect for both air cooling as well as radiators, the Corsair light loop RGB fans are an excellent choice for that ultra custom look. Learn more by clicking the link below. All right, if you've been following me for any length of time, then you already know that I am a huge car enthusiast. And ever since the D-Frame first launched a couple years ago, I had to have one. Problem was, I couldn't afford it. Ow, and they were limited edition, and they were really hard to get your hands on, but that's all changed. I've got one now, and it's the D-Frame 2.0, so there's actually been some changes here. And I've just really been a fan of Inwin lately, especially since doing, when, when doing the Terry Crews build. Look at the way they pack stuff. This is, I, this is, a, this is definitely, ooh, check it out, I got my own membership card now. Terry has one, now I got one. The way they pack stuff just says they care about you and your hard earned money. These are all the cables and stuff because these also include their own power supplies. Love it or hate it, the problem is uh, they're fairly designed specifically with their cases in mind. They, you can't just plop in your own PSU. This one's in there tight, there we go. Reason for that is, at least with the way it was on the Tau 2.0, is it's not a standard form factor. You can see right here, the screw holes are a straight up right, rectangular. They're not offset like they are in standard PSUs. Look at the fan on that guy, holy hell. So this is the power supply that comes with the D-Frame. It's a 1,065 watt. It's got plexi window on the side so you can see in. It just looks really good. I like, I like that vent though. The cool thing is since this hangs on the back of the case, as you'll see, this definitely gives it a a very aggressive kind of a race car radiator look because that's one of the reasons why I wanted the D-frame. To me, it looks like a roll cage. And that's what I love about it most is it just, it looks very automotive to me. And this has ever been a time that I really hope I don't drop something is now because the tempered glass side panels are on them. On it already. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> This is heavy. Time for the unveiling. Now here's the thing. These come in multiple colors. They come in white and blue. They come in black and gold, which is on the box right here. This is not the one I chose, but that's the black and gold one they've been showing off. And they also come with a black and green. Well, I think it's pretty obvious which one I went with. Look at that. Oh, this is amazing. Well, would you just look at it? Look at that. Oh my God, it's so heavy. What? I didn't even know it did that. <laughs> what do you know? Now I guess it feels more like a, it feels more like a fighter jet, right? It's just when the canopy comes down. So the glass on this is lightly tinted, very lightly. Um, got all the anodized, geez, it's just the amount of detail that went into this. You can see right here, this is all laser cut, anodized, D-frame. These are limited edition, so they're numbered. What number is this one? Actually, this one doesn't have a number on it, so. Okay, maybe they're not numbered, but I digress. So what accessories? You get some extra feet, which is kind of nice. These are rubber, so that keeps them from sliding around. You know what's awesome, though, is to keep the feet from rotating or moving, it's got this little kind of a peg or nipple, or just kind of looks like a penis, I guess. That, you know, like that. that keeps it from turning. So we got some extra feet for the bottom right there. We got some zip ties to keep things as orderly as possible. We got some extra screws. Uh, so that's to hold the glass on. We got some extra rubber grommets, which is for the glass. Let's see, we got our PSU and all of our standoffs, screws, 
and of course a, of course a cleaning cloth for the glass. And then these are the cables for the power supply right here. And this is what uh, obviously we're going to be changing. So they are flat style cables. They are not sleeved or anything. They are just black insulation on there. And pretty standard. This is the kind of thing you would see with any other power supply. Usually, you know, doesn't matter if it's Corsair or EVGA or whatever. They kind of look like this. So, yeah, nothing special there. That's why we definitely, <clears throat> a case like this certainly deserves a custom set of cables. And you know that that's going to happen. The other part that you guys are probably wondering is if I'm not using the stuff from Skunk Works, what am I going to be putting in here? And that's sort of been my struggle. Skunk Works has a lot of horsepower in it. It's got a 6950X. Oh, geez. Okay, whew, we got it. Let's put this safely away. Okay, nobody go near this box. It's got the glass in it. Okay, so check this out. We'll talk about hardware in a second here, but this case is fairly inverted with a graphics card to go up here on top. And you kind of bring your cables out through the back right here. Your PSU mounts in this box right here. So that's what I was saying with the way the fan goes. It's got a very automotive kind of a feel as it's in there. So that's gonna look really cool. And then just the welds, even the welds on this. I'm gonna assume these are robot welded and not a human welding all of these, but the welds look perfect. The anodizing or powder coating, absolutely flawless on this, which is why I wanted this guy right here. Now you can see it's got room for a 360 rad on the bottom. But the cool thing is we can actually mount a 360 rad on the front as well. Um, it's got these really interesting sort of mounts right here. So what I'll probably have to do is some, I might have to do some custom work on this, but that's never scared me. So if I have to do that, I believe I can move this fan up. They do have pictures where they show a 360 rad on the front and a 360 rad on the bottom. And that's my goal. That's what I'm gonna go for because let's talk about hardware here for the new, the new build. I, I don't even know what I'm gonna call it, to be honest. We'll come up with something. Just yesterday, the new Titan V launched. It stands for Volta. You guys have been waiting for Volta. It's a $3,000 graphics card. Don't think I'm getting one for review. I don't know if anyone is, to be honest, because last time they launched a $3,000 graphics card, they didn't send any for review, that being the Titan Z. They say that that card is a complete, they say that card is built from the ground up for machine learning. And they've said that like all along, ever since Nvidia got into the deep learning game, they've said that. And then they end up, you know, cutting it down a little bit and calling it a gamer card, even though it's the same core. But this time around, they've actually made some architectural changes that specifically are tailored towards science and deep learning and all of that. I have no idea how well it's going to perform in gaming. If I can get my hands on one, determine if they're any good or not, then I might actually consider it. But I'm thinking about doing 8700K in this because I don't really do... Wait a minute. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> when you have that aha moment. How many of you guys were screaming right now at the thing going, it's not, you're not supposed to do that. It actually still comes off. Well, hey, I figured it out better late than never. Hmm. So I'm thinking 8700K and the reason for that is it's not quite as demanding in terms of power as the X299 stuff. Any direction I went was skunk works uh, on a higher end CPU would mean more cores. And the problem is that does not compute to a better gaming experience, very rarely, especially when I have 10 cores, 20 threads already on that. I've got 7980XE back here, 16, or no, 18 cores, 36 threads, complete waste when it comes to gaming. There's nothing I'm doing at home that's gonna utilize that kind of power. 7960X upstairs, using it as my editing rig. At home, I occasionally do some live streaming, occasionally. So that's why I think the 8700K would be perfect. It's not quite as power demanding. Sure, it's warm, but we can do some things to fix that. I'm thinking about going with the new Maximus formula when it comes out. I think it's, I should have one on the way, but uh, doing a full cover block on that, and of course, water cooling all of this. Don't need massive amounts of storage, so all these will go. Don't need these, that's why I'm gonna put the radiator in the front, because it's just gonna be a gaming rig, and I wanna build a kick-ass gaming rig. The problem is I don't know what to do about graphics cards because we are coming up soon on possibly mainstream Volta coming, if ever. I don't know if there's ever, if they're ever gonna feel that there's a need for it in the gaming world, I'm sure they will. But I don't think Titan V is gonna be it though because just cost of performance on that for gaming. If I go SLI, you guys know I like SLI, that's $6,000 in graphics cards, plus tax, let's just call it 6,600. It's ridiculous, it's a ridiculous amount of price to performance. 
But this looks, this looks fantastic. Now you know what we're gonna need to do here. We're gonna also have to do some custom wiring because everything is visible, just like we did with the Terry Crews build. There's glass on both sides. There's nowhere to hide wiring. We are going to have to have our custom length, custom sleeve cables. I might give it a shot. I might try and do it myself. I also might just bring in uh, my good friend Joe with Sanctum to see uh, what we can do here. So anyway, that's it. That's just kind of a quick video to show you guys here what's happening. Like I said, the Post Malone video has been postponed. That's what we're actually calling. I'm calling the project postponed, not like because it's delayed, but P-W-N-E-D, like you got pwned. That's what I'm calling it. And once his album's out and we see all of the details and, and the, the flair, then we'll figure out what we're gonna do. There's been a lot of people who've built in the D-frame, lots of inspiration out there. I'm gonna try and come up with my own take on it. But I'm gonna go, tell me what you think about the, the black and the green. I think it looks real good. I'm probably gonna stick with the, the green theme inside, obviously. But uh, yeah, I know there's lots of great cases out there, but this is one that I have just been drooling over for a while now. And now that I finally got my own, huge thank you to Inwin for hooking me up with this, for sure. All right guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Shwing. <laughs>